In a previous building video at the Hazelwood Project, we poured footings for our new house. The next step of the process is putting up the concrete walls for our basement. I mean, look at this. We just did this yesterday. Someone's excited. Despite our enthusiasm to push forward, the weather had other ideas. Oh my gosh. Come along to see what we're doing. So all of this might look like junk, mainly because it's been sitting outside for a while. But this is actually ICF that we had from our property that we sold to mom and dad and they bought. So, so dad's actually able to start on his walls for his house a little early, even before he actually gets his shipment in because he had our leftover. Having the footings poured was a psychological boost. Even though the weather wasn't ideal, we wanted to start seeing some walls going up, so we dove into the process of stacking our forms. One load of many. So here's what I've been working on today. Just kind of setting some corners, and uh, you can kind of see, uh, maybe you can see, there's a metal bracket down there at the bottom. It's actually nailed into the, the concrete. I'm gonna try to get down here on this next wall uh, tonight before um, I get out of here. Uh, the rain keeps uh, starting up and then tapering off and starting up and tapering off. So I don't know whether or not uh, it's gonna give me enough breaks to get in here and get it done. What are they doing out here still? I feel very unsafe. <laughs> then what, Dad? Oh my gosh. Well, common sense prevailed and we shut it down for the day. The next day we got back at it, stripping forms and getting ready to lay some more quad lock. We're taking care as we're stripping off forms and bracing because each piece of wood that we can salvage we'll end up using in another place in the build. <gasps> Not very sexy clearing forms, just work. With another section of form stripped, we're now ready to put more quad locks down. I'm finding that it's easy working with Kyle because he knows the system so well. I can even hand him the toughest part of the process and he handles it with ease. When you come to a corner, you have to think a little bit about how you're going to um, make the transition from your pattern to the right length of panel that you need going into the corner. And then the corner itself has some metal brackets that you have to add. And then you take the nylon tie and trim them a little bit to get them to fit and add some strength to the corner. Tees are a bit more complicated. They have all the complexity of a corner, except they have twice as much metal and you have to reestablish the pattern. The pattern is important so that the nylon ties will then resume uh, meeting on the four foot increments as you go down the next wall. 
Once you have the pattern established, adding additional layers becomes a lot easier. During the morning here, I worked predominantly on this wall here that's the uh, north side of the house down into this corner. And then Kyle really focused on this T here, this intersection where it goes into our first step. Did a great job and uh, looks like everything's working out good. Now it's time to stage some more materials down in the pit so we can get started on another section of the wall. We received our order of quad locks from the manufacturer in Georgia just this past week. They're stacked up here. We're going to uh, take them and uh, spot them around the foundation. As each course goes up, we'll go ahead and put a horizontal piece of rebar in there uh, to support that. Once the walls are stacked to the height we intend them to be, we'll cut the vertical rebar and slide them down into the channels. Well, we're almost done stacking up our quad locks, um, but I wanted to take a quick moment to just stop and kind of show you a little bit about how this system works um, in case you're thinking, hey, I might be able to try that. The general quad lock building block is a four by one, four foot by one foot panel um, that is styrofoam and it comes in different thicknesses. This one in particular is three and a quarter inches thick. Um, but uh, it, it comes in uh, this size and it's actually got, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got uh, two inch intervals. And so you can build anything in a two inch interval. Um, and so if you got a you know, 36 by 24 building, uh, it's easily a two inch interval. Um, and you can adjust that just with a simple sawzall. You can cut it down to the size that you need. They just uh, quad lock stack together. We use these green nylon ties to set the spacing between the panels. And then once everything is together, we pour concrete. Uh, the green ties indicate an eight inch wide block. Um, there are other ties, reds and yellows, and I think blacks, so that you can get six or 10 or 12 inch thick concrete walls if you choose. In the panels, there are these um, special insertion points where you can uh, make the nylon tie uh, hook into the panel. The corners are probably the most complicated part of the system, um, but uh, you, you take that corner piece with the knockout um, and it started in the corner. Let me go ahead and uh, put some of these together. Uh, pretty easy. They're already uh, cut to length, um, but uh, if I was just starting with a four foot piece, I would figure out how many um, how, how many inches wide I needed and cut it to length there. So we've got uh, styrofoam stacked up and then uh, there, there are some additional pieces, an outside piece and an inside piece and they just fit down on the little uh, knobs of the system. And then you'd go ahead and take the ties and uh, insert down into um, the brackets uh, to hold them together. It's just a way of uh, strengthening the corner. I've actually taken a, a tie and I've taken the sawzall and cut them, cut them off. And so that gives me um, some pieces that are just uh, small, um, not actually going all the way across. And those fit in uh, to further attach um, the metal into that corner and strengthen the corner.
All right, and that's a corner. And then we'd, uh, we'd go along here and just continue to add uh, ties um, down the wall. One of the uh, things that you want to understand about this system is that uh, every time that you have a break in your panels, you want that the, the, the two panels coming together to actually break right um, at a tie. So in this case, I have a break right here between these two panels. So I'm going to want to stitch those two together by putting a tie right there. And generally, you'll put a tie every um, every foot. So you just saw how we put the um, the nylon tie over the break um, between the panels, and um, on uh, the next layer up, you want to make the break happen in a different place. So we'll want to actually stagger the seams so that they happen a foot or two foot down the wall. So as you look down into the cavity, this is what it looks like when it's all put together. Our previous access point for getting into the basement footing area um, has kind of been de destroyed by the fact that the wall is going up. So we decided that we needed to go ahead and create ourselves a new access point. We have this little goat trail sitting over here going up through uh, the footing to get in and out it's a little wobbly, um, but it'll work for now. We've got all of the materials staged down here inside the basement footing areas. Um, so we know how much we have left to work with. Hopefully we won't run out if I've done my math right. This is the fourth building that I'm using ICF forms on. In each case, I used a brand called Quadlocks. The first house that I did was a 6,000 square foot house in Alaska. I initially used them because of price. The concrete contractors quoted me numbers in the forty-five and forty-six thousand dollar range for that first house. After looking at the prices for quad locks and doing it myself, I think I spent twenty-two to twenty-three thousand dollars doing the exact same thing. So it was a significant cost savings. I'm not sure that the ICF system has kept its price competitiveness. You'd have to do the math in your own situation. But there are other reasons that factor into why I use ICFs to do my concrete foundation walls. It seems like there are three options to get these concrete walls built. Number one, I could hire a crew with forms and they would come and set that up and pour the concrete. That is pretty expensive though. Secondly, I could rent forms, but the downside of that is you rent them for an extended period of time if you're doing the project solo like I am. Thirdly, you can buy ICFs and do it yourself at your own pace and maybe save a bit of money, but you'd have to do the math for yourself. I do like ICFs because they're DIY friendly. If you can build with Legos, you can build with ICF panels. Third reason that I like ICFs is that I get to stay in control of the schedule. I can work on it a little bit one day and then if I got something else coming up on another day I can uh, switch gears and then come back to it later. Another reason I like ICFs is that you don't have to be a bodybuilder lifting heavy concrete blocks or heavy form panels. Finally, I like the fact that I'm doing it and I can control the quality of the build. I can see um, how things are being put together. I know how much steel I'm putting in. I know that when I pour this wall, I've got a solid foundation for the house that I'm gonna build on top of it. Well, today is one of those days where you just put your head down and get after it. 
So ended up stacking all the rest of the quad locks today. Was able to get everything stacked. Didn't run out of materials and my estimates were pretty close. Next thing on the agenda is to put all the vertical rebar in place and then brace the walls in preparation for our pour. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We appreciate that. Until next time, see ya.